the world is in our hands. That's the topic on hand. I'm delighted to be here talking to Bellevue High School. Thank you so much for organizing this. Uh, my name is uh, Rishi Kumar and uh, I'm running for US Congress. I'm a high tech uh, geek from Silicon Valley. And uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation because it's the topic of the time. And uh, when you look at, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's sort of broadly defined. And what I'm gonna do today is focus upon this world of COVID-19. And, uh, you know, back in December, when you, uh, you know, we were actually in the throes of a campaign to the March primaries, and we were hearing first about the Wuhan, uh, the, the virus that had infected the population uh, in Wuhan and how they were impacted with it. You know, we would not have realized that uh, this is what would play out here in the United States and also in, uh, in the rest of the world. And it's essentially defined uh, a new way of life. And uh, some of us have reconciled to it well, some of us have not. So, so I'll give you an example of what we did. You know, as soon as we finished the March uh, primary, that was March 3rd, we started our campaign for the next round to the general election. But uh, we discovered that uh, the world is, uh, is changing and uh, we were essentially had to suspend the campaign. And we were a little distraught with that we're not really sure as to how this would work out for us. But uh, we realized very quickly that uh, there was a lot of angst that was building up uh, amongst people um, in Silicon Valley, you know, schools had shut down. And we realized that uh, with all these emotions that were playing out with, uh, in the minds of people and uh, how we were unable to reconcile with the new world, we said it's an opportunity for us to be of help. So, what we ended up doing was launching a neighborhood pandemic preparedness team. And we, 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 we essentially asked people to sign up and become volunteers as part of this program. This was actually modeled after the neighborhood uh, safety watch program that had been very successful here in my city of Saratoga. And uh, very quickly, we found a few hundred people signing up. And I was like, wow, you know, this is pretty amazing. Why are these folks signing up? And we would do a daily noon call and people would show up. Uh, and there was only one desire. There was only one thread that was bringing them together, which was the zeal to help. You know, they, they were themselves going through a lot of uh, mental anguish sometimes with this uh, new world, what the future was, uh, what lay ahead. And, uh, you know, we could realize that uh, this was how we can all come together and help our neighbors. And this is what we ended up doing. So I'll tell you what we did. Uh, you know, we took matter in our hands and we said, uh, this is the time where we can engage and uh, see how we can uh, essentially have neighbors helping neighbors. So we rolled out this program and uh, this, uh, we were training volunteers to go out there in different neighborhoods in their own neighborhoods, finding seniors and, uh, and essentially sometimes just dropping a flyer outside the door to see how we could uh, be of help. And sometimes it was calling. And uh, very soon we started hearing these amazing stories where people were uh, reaching out to their neighbors and the neighbors were feeling so much better when they were able to just help one senior ne neighbor stay quarantined. And uh, you know it was creating some level of joy and happiness amongst people. And we could hear that on our daily calls. People would show up, they would talk about it. We said, let's figure out a different way. Let's uh, see how we can take this program and grow it exponentially. So we started calling seniors. You know, we started calling seniors of Silicon Valley and uh, we had a list uh, of uh, our seniors who started calling and uh, reaching out and, and essentially telling them that, look, uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, if you would like to be quarantined, then we are there to help you out. And we can help you with groceries. We can help you with medications. Anything that you need, we are there to help you. And uh, you know, sometimes our, our neighbors thought that this was a scam. And they would actually send out an email to our campaign and say, is this really something that you guys have launched? And, uh, and after we assured them that this was uh, truly the case, they would reach out uh, for help. And there were certain scenarios where uh, people were economically impacted, they didn't have the money, and they were looking for help with groceries or simple medications. And we were able to find other volunteers who, were, who, were, who basically said that, look, I have what I need. I'm there to help people. 
and they were willing to to invest in helping their neighbors. And uh, essentially, what what came about of all this was, you know, we could have had a gloom and doom scenario where, oh my God, what's going to happen now? And we are all sort of waiting to get back to normalcy. And uh, it's August already, and uh, we would still be waiting. But instead of that, we said, let's let's take charge. Let's figure out what we can do to help our community out. And this is really what I would like to talk to you about. You know, when there is a situation, you know, we have a few different options. You know, we could essentially uh, feel pretty miserable, depressed, and then not do anything and wait for something magical to happen. But when we take upon this world and, and take charge, and uh, we are essentially trying to exert our will upon the world. We are trying to see what else we could do. Sometimes we may not have the answers. And now, now that goes back to, to my stint as a council member of Saratoga. You know, we, we apply the framework of high-tech innovation into public policy, into public governance. And uh, so what we have done is uh, we have taken on challenges that we never quite knew how to address or how to solve. But it's a pretty interesting story because uh, if we take the first step forward, we will definitely find the way and, and uh, you know, we, we will find that uh, with, with our engagement upon a specific problem, upon an issue, we are able to go out and make a huge difference. And uh, this is really what happened to me when it comes to my journey. Uh, it all, all began right in my neighborhood when there was a burglary and I said, look, I can launch a neighborhood watch program. And I had no idea how to do it, but uh, I thought maybe we can collaborate with the neighbors. And it, it is never that easy to do anything. You know, it took me like six months of an effort, but uh, you know, we could, uh, some of our neighbors ended up at the city council meeting and saying that, look, we need to do something better. This is not fair that our home, homes have been broken into. But, uh, you know, instead of, uh, in, instead of uh, playing the game of uh, complaining, I said, let me figure out, you know, what we can do to really bring our neighbors together and take action where we are empowering our neighbors. And I accidentally discovered the path of the Neighborhood Watch program. And uh, having done that in my neighborhood, when I was elected to the city council, uh, our burglaries had gone up uh, from uh, 59 burglaries to 130 burglaries uh, a year in about four years. And we said, we need to do something about it. And same thing, you know, I had no idea what I would be doing, but I started having neighborhood meetings, bringing people together, and we created a framework for our neighbors to connect, communicate, and collaborate. And uh, that actually seemingly helped out because we dropped our burglaries by almost uh, 41% year to year, the largest drop compared to any other Silicon Valley city. We may not know the way, we may not know the way but uh, it really rests upon our hands, upon each of us in terms of what we could do. And uh, I would not be running here for Congress today if I had not taken that first step of knocking on a door, inviting them for a meeting. And uh, I actually stood outside the door for a few minutes thinking that, you know, I work for IBM, do I really need to be doing this? But I mustered up the courage. And the very first person I, I spoke to in my neighborhood he said uh, very gently that, look, I've lived here for 30 years. We don't need such stuff around here. I'm just fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it, right? But, but there was a problem and people were a little anxious. So we said, let's figure out what, what we could do. And uh, that showed me a path of community engagement, community service. And in spite of my role as a high-tech executive, you know, what is really creating happiness for me is the fact that I'm able to help people. And that has become my calling. You know, I would not have ever imagined that this would be a path forward for me, even if I go back like 10 years ago. I would never have imagined being a California Democratic Party executive board member, a delegate, a council member, and now running for Congress. But it only happened because I decided that I needed to take the first step forward to see how I can be of help. And that created, sparked a deep, immense joy in me. And, uh, you know, it, it, it basically shows me a way forward. I would never have thought in November 2018 that I would be running for Congress. And lo and behold, in, uh, we, we announced formally in, uh, in the very next month, uh, in January of uh, in the next year, in uh, 20, February of 2019, 20, uh, we announced our run. And uh, we have been running pretty hard for the last almost 16, 17 months now. 
and it's a great story playing out. We have a great chance to win this race. So I invite you to explore. And uh, when you see something wrong, when you see something which is not right around you, you know, what I would do was I would look around and see who's going to engage. But, you know, the onus is upon me, upon us to engage and see how we can advance that cause, explore different options to address the problem. And when that happens, when we are able to do that, you will discover a life's calling. And you look at when you go back and read some of the stories that have happened in this world of how people found uh, found a path of, uh, of stardom, for example, right? I mean, you look at Nelson Mandela or so many figures like Mahatma Gandhi, you know, he was thrown out of a train in, in South Africa and that became his calling, you know? I mean, from a point of time where, you know, you are feeling pretty bad, you, you are shaken up by what you just experienced and, uh, and he decided that he wanted to make it uh, become the fighting spirit. And uh, he launched uh, many, uh, many movements back in India that we still uh, remember to today. So these things happen by taking that very first step. And I invite you on that path. And I promise you this, that you will not only make the world a much better place, but uh, you will also discover that the world is truly in, in our hands. And all we have to do is take that first step forward. Thank you so much. My pleasure chatting with you and uh, look forward to staying in touch with you. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye.